So now I'm gonna briefly explain what's happening in the code. So we imported a peer for matrices and vectors. Uh, I forgot to change this squad to cube as well. And uh, here in the buffer data too. So uh, so we created this uniform matrix for type uh, variable called transform and uh, we're getting its location from the shader program with GL get, get uniform location and uh, updating its value with the GL uniform matrix for FV, I think it's uh, for float values. And what this GL uniform matrix for FV is doing, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, show you here. So, the first argument specifies, specifies the location of the uniform value, which is this transform lock. The second uh, argument specifies the number of matrices that are to be modified. Uh, this should be one if the targeted uniform variable is not an array of matrices, ma matrices and one or more if it is an array of matrices. So we are having one. The third parameter, the transpose, specifies whether the transpose, whether to transpose the matrix as the values are loaded into the uniform variable. And this must be false, so we have false here. And the uh, fourth value is, is the value specifies a pointer pointer to an array of count values that will be used to update the specified uniform variable. So we are setting it as uh, rotation underscore x times rotation underscore y and these two values come from here rotation x and rotation y. So the rotation X is, uh, I'm using the peer library for that so peer that matrix 4 by 4 that from X rotation times the 0 0.5 from X rotation 0 0.5 times the GLF that get time so GLF that get time is here uh, as time input it returns returns the number of seconds since the timer was started when the li library was initialized with GLF in it the platform specific specific time sources used usually have micro or nanoseconds resolution so after we initialize the GLFW library here as it says libraries initialize returns the number of seconds so this is always changing we need to, we need a value which is always changing so that's why we're using uh, GLW that get time because Without these, the cube uh, won't rotate. So it just changes uh, once the rotation on x and once uh, 0 0.5 for x and 0 0.8 for y, and it stays that in that position. So that's why we need constantly update uh, its rotation so 
so. And uh, let's see for that library here. You can read the documentation for it online. And uh, for better understanding how vectors and matrices uh, work, I strongly recommend an online book which is learnopengl.com and in the getting started the transformation section which uh, it explains this guy explains uh, matrices um, in very good so or another book which is open the GL and the transformations uh, let's see and the enable depth test so it's here enable and disable the, and the various capabilities so with GL enable we can enable all these things we are just enabling the depth test here if enabled do depth comparisons and update the, the depth buffer note that even if the depth buffer exists and the depth mask is non-zero the depth buffer is not not updated if the depth is depth test is disabled so let's look what happens when I disable the depth testing so this strange thing is happening uh, some sides of the cube are being drawn over the other sides of the cube as you see but Luckily, OpenGL stores depth information information in the Z buffer, uh, and it allows OpenGL to decide when to draw over a pixel and when not to draw. So I'm gonna turn it back. So that's why we are enabling the depth testing.